Well, there we are. That music always just sort of sets a calming influence. As I think about my Sunday sermon, and, and today, this week, I want to focus on the cost of going woke. Because many people think, oh, why do you worry about it? Let me tell you, and I'm going to prove it in this sermon. There is a huge national economic cost of going woke. Go woke, go broke is the expression. And it's not just applying to companies like Costa Coffee that we'll be talking about later. No, no, it applies to a whole national economy. And I'm telling you that at the moment, the UK's economy is heading towards an iceberg. I talked about this earlier in the week. And we've got to change course, because if not, we're going to hit the iceberg and we're going to sink. And it's not a coincidence that with the growth of all of this wokery, that at the same time, many of us, most of us, all of us, frankly, are feeling poorer. That is not a coincidence because it's infecting, it's poisoning so many aspects of our society. What goes on? You've got medium and big private companies, the whole of the private sector, are completely trapped and hijacked and in thrall to the world of woke. And it's affecting us culturally, mentally, but I'm going to prove financially. Because 20 years ago, you see, woke didn't really exist. No one had heard of it. It wasn't out there. And let me remind many of you, most of you, possibly all of you, but many of you, in the 1990s, do you remember those, those chaps, Sir John Major, Tony Blair, oh, I'm so sorry, Sir Tony Blair now. Do you remember when they were Prime Minister? Whatever you thought of them and their policies. In the 1990s, leading up to 2000, we had seven years, no less, where the economy grew at least 2.5% per annum. In a couple of years, our economy back then grew 4% per annum. These are levels of growth we can only dream of now. I mean, it's just out there in the ether. Something that happens somewhere else. No chance that it's going to happen here in the UK with the highest taxation we've ever seen since the Second World War. No chance whatsoever. Back then, wages were growing above inflation by some 2.8% above inflation every single year for a whole decade. Just think about that. And the truth was, we all felt a lot better off than we do now. And guess what? There was no net zero. There was no environmental social governance, which is known conveniently as ESG for short. None of that requirement for companies. And there was none of this equality, diversity and inclusion, otherwise known as EDI for short. Oh, and by the way, there was no mass immigration either lawful or, frankly, illegal. And do you remember, the place worked. It absolutely worked. No one was saying Britain is broken, the place doesn't work. You know, things actually happened. You could see a GP. There weren't long waiting lists in hospitals, might have been a bit. So you could see a GP. Things actually worked. Even the trains worked. Do you remember those days? And the reality is we've never grown as an economy at the same rate ever since. And I'm putting to you folks that that's not a coincidence. The cost of woke is affecting us not just culturally, but financially. It is significantly to blame for the low growth, for the poor productivity. And let's just drill into that a little bit. So, environmental, social and governance. It's diverted companies away from the basic fiduciary function that they're supposed to carry out on behalf of their shareholders, which is to make some cash, make some profits so that you can invest in more equipment, in more people and keep growing and then you pay more tax. No, 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 they've diverted to other issues in society. Values, be nice. And of course it's diverted the public sector, away from actually doing what they're there to do, which is to run our services properly, promptly and effectively and efficiently for us, the paying customer. Yes. I mean, if you go back then, I don't recall the police 
painting their cars in rainbow colours, do you? I mean, it all sounds very nice, doesn't it? Well-intentioned. But it's the law of unintended consequences. What's happened is this environmental social governance, it's hijacked the whole boardroom agenda, all of the discussions. So you end up with some of the biggest clearing banks, like NatWest, deciding which customers should and shouldn't be allowed to have a bank account based on your views and what you do or don't tweet one day or another, or what your views may be on Brexit or net zero. That's what's going on. And surprise, surprise, the economy is not growing. You see, net zero is all part of this. It's all part of the environmental section of ESG. We've been banging on about it for a long time. It's only been around for about five years since Theresa May, bright spark that she was, decided to introduce it in law after about 90 minutes of discussion and no vote back in the dying days of her prime ministerialship. That was the first time. And since then, of course, what have we seen? We've seen energy prices soar. We've seen for the first time in our lifetime the risk of actually the whole country literally running out of electricity, praying for a warm winter, for heaven's sake. Whole firms have changed the way they go about things. It's not a coincidence that firms are struggling, energy prices are soaring, and low growth is out there. It's all linked. And yes, I know, we've had COVID, but we're well past that. And the chickens are coming home to roost. This stuff, this wokeness, it's changing the whole way of life for so many people. And my point is that it's actually financially damaging us. It's making us all poorer. And the time taken thinking about all of this stuff, it takes you away from the core function in the boardroom as a director, from getting on and making some money, learning the lessons of your mistakes, not making them again. Surprise, surprise. If you waste time focusing on non-core issues, then growth suffers, performance deteriorates, and we all feel worse off as a result. And again, it sounds lovely, doesn't it? Equality, diversity, inclusion or ESI for short, but it leads to mediocrity. It leads to companies that might make a decent cup of coffee like Costa Coffee from thinking that it's a really good idea instead to show on their adverts a picture of a healthy woman having mutilated, butchered her healthy breasts. Unbelievable, utterly abhorrent. I wanted a cup of coffee yesterday, I walked past a Costa shop. I took a photo of its branding and I tweeted it out there. I said, I've walked on by. You're not having my money. If that's what you want to do, there's a cost to all of this stuff. I'm not shopping there again. And you've got the public sector doing the same thing, focusing on all this absolutely irrelevant nonsense. No benefit whatsoever to the people who pay the bills. That's us, the users. We are actually customers of the public sectors. We're taxpayers. The services have got worse as they've diverted their attention to this stuff. 20 years ago, do you remember councils painting pedestrian crossings at the expense of 50,000 quid for a month in the colours of a rainbow? Really? Do you remember that? I don't. And things worked. And of course, within this section of inclusion, you've got the whole trans debate that's exploded onto the scene in the last few years. And look, I've got no issue with any adult that wants to go trans, but the trans issue is damaging. It's confusing to our children. It's ruining people's lives. And it's wasting our time. It's sapping our energy. You've now got a situation reported this weekend. The NHS is preparing to give treatment to children as young as seven on this stuff. Maybe they're just having a bad week or two. As Christo said earlier, when he discovered he was gay, but today, if you might think you're gay or lesbian, you might say, well, I'm being pressurized to consider that I'm trans. No, you're just growing up. This is seriously dangerous stuff, folks. The NHS shouldn't be wasting its time and efforts and resources treating children as young as seven who may think 
that they've got gender dysphoria. It's not right. It's wrong, and some of us, all of us, in my view, have got to be brave enough to tell it as it is. And that's even before you get alongside the whole nonsense of what pronoun shall I use today? I mean, I think it was Nat West, coincidentally, that said you could use a different pronoun on Monday to the pronoun you used on Wednesday, for heaven's sake. Unbelievable. Who come up with this stuff? How many people are they employing? By the way, we own almost 40% of them. To talk about this stuff, what a waste of time sticking it all on the bottom of your emails. It doesn't create any profit, it doesn't create any growth, it doesn't increase wages. It damages our productivity, it damages our growth, and our competitors around the world, in China, in the Middle East, in America, in Russia, they're laughing, absolutely laughing at our stupidity. And how do we allow this stuff? I tell you what it is, it's because of weak, feeble and frankly pathetic leadership by the bosses, the chief executives, the managing directors, the chairman, the permanent secretaries of the departments. You've seen it with the whole debanking saga. I mean, why do they suddenly think they're the guardians of values? You've seen how it damages brand, how it damages reputations. Bosses need to stand up and say, actually, no, this isn't going to help us grow our profits. It's not going to help us improve shareholder returns. It's not going to help us employ more people doing productive things, getting better. Absolutely not. I tell you, I was a boss of a big billion pound multinational business about 10 years ago. When I was chief exec, there is no way I would have stood for this nonsense. If someone had come to me and said they want to put pronouns at the bottom of all the emails, I'd have said, what are you talking about? Just get on, do your job and do it well. Help the company make more profit so we can grow faster. I wouldn't have tolerated this stuff. It's weak leadership. That's what it is. And if you allow this to go on, then performance suffers service deteriorates and ultimately it's people, ordinary folk up and down the country that feel worse off. And that's even before you get on to the subject of mass immigration. You know, eight or nine million people in the last 15 years or so coming into the UK, the chairman of the OBR admitting that actually per head it hasn't increased our productivity, it hasn't increased our wealth at all. All of this stuff is linked to this issue. And I repeat, if you go woke, you end up going broke. And that's why we've got to keep talking about it. We've got to stop it. We've got to take it on. Because if we don't, folks, I tell you, we're heading towards the iceberg. Iceberg ahead, folks. Change course or sink. And here endeth my Sunday sermon.